Hello everyone, that's Mohammed, and this video is going to be an update for my SPI tutorial to make some improvements and to add some extra content. In my video today, I'm going to show you how to use SPI of the STM board with and without Cubemix. The Cubemix method is very useful for someone who want to proceed really fast with his project, and using HAL libraries without Cubemix is very beneficial for learning purposes, specifically for students. Before I start, I would like to give you a very brief introduction about SPI. But I assume that the majority of you have some background about it already. But for those people who know nothing about SPI interface, the most important thing I would like you to know is that SPI is a three-wire interface. It has got Serial Clock Line, Mozi, and Mizu. Serial Clock is provided by the master device, which is usually the microcontroller itself. Mozi stands for Master Output Slave Input, and Mizu is Master Input Slave Output. In addition to that, it has got a chip select line to activate a certain slave because you can only activate a certain slave at a time and this is usually active low you set it to zero to activate, you set it high to deactivate and that should be enough introduction okay so in my demo today I'm using the STM board accelerometer this chip is already on the board and is connected to one of the SPI lines and according to the schematics this is connected to this accelerometer device is connected to SPI line number one so the clock is connected to PA5, Muzi on PA7, and Mizu is on PA6. The slave select is on PE3, just a digital output on the STM, and the interrupt data ready line is on PE0. Because in my demo today, I'm going to show you how to use interrupt data ready as well. This is very useful for majority of measurement devices, and instead of you going and reading data continuously from the device, you can just wait for the data ready interrupt to uh, trigger and then read the data from the device. I'm going to demo it without the data ready interrupt and with the interrupt, and I'm sure you will get to appreciate why it is useful. Okay, I think that's enough information. Let's start our demo on Cubemix. Click on New Project and select the right board, STM32407 VGT. For the panel, we first need to enable SPI1 because that's where the accelerometer device is connected to. And to enable it, scroll down till you find SPI1 and select the mode to be full duplex master. And you will see PA5, 6, and 7 enabled. The next thing we need to enable PE3 and set it to digital output for the slave select. And I need to enable PE0 and set it to external interrupt because this is where the data ready interrupt line is connected to. I'm also going to enable one of my LEDs and that's everything for the pinout. Next go to configuration and the first thing I want to do is I want to enable the external interrupt line. You see XTI line 0 this needs to be enabled for the interrupt to work. And go to TPIO and I'm going to select, set the slave select to high at the default state because it's an active low pin. And go to SPI We've got to set the parameters here. Um, the most important one is perhaps the prescaler. I'm going to set it to 16 because the device is capable of 1 megabits per second, I believe. Uh, and that's it. Click OK. We're ready to generate the code. Uh, give the project a name. I'm going to call it SPI1 and select the right IDE, MDK ARM v5. And click OK. And once the source code is generated, click on Open Project. And this will take you to Kyle Microvision. Uh, and in here, open the main. Uh, and the first thing I want to do is I want to enable two variables, two buffers, TX buffer and RX buffer of size 2. So TX buffer is the buffer I use to store the data in and then pass it to the transmit function to transmit it to the device. And RX buffer is to store the received data into it. And I'm going to give it an size 2 as well. Now, I'll show you how to transmit data via SPI. There are three main steps. You need to bring the slave select line to low, transmit register plus data, and then bring the slave select line high again. And to bring the slave select line to low, we use HAL TPIO write pin function. And it's on port E pin 3. And this will bring the slave select line to low to activate the slave device. Then to transmit data via SPI, we, write, we first write the data in the uh, SPI TX buffer. So 
first we write the register address which is 0x20 for the control register number 4 and then the data we want to write to that register and it's going to be 0x11 in this case to enable the accelerometer's x-axis and to set the data output data rate to uh, 3 Hz. Then you call HullSPI transmit function. And this function takes few parameters. It takes the SPI handle type diff, which is HSPI1 defined by Cubamix. Then the TX buffer address, which is just the array name. And the data size, 2, 2 bytes and the timeout. I'm just going to give it 50 milliseconds. And this would write 0x11 to register 0x20. Now I need to bring the slave select line high again. Now let me show you how to do SPI receive. I'm going to read date from register 0x20 to verify that the data has been written successfully. And to do this, there are four steps for SPI receive. First you bring the slave select line to low then transmit register plus 0x80. This is to set the most significant bit to high to enable read mode. And then you read data via receive function. And finally, bring a slave select line high. Okay, so use a similar function to bring slave select line low, then transmit register plus 80. So it's gonna be register number 20, but I'm gonna or it with 0x80 to set its most significant bit to high and enable read mode. And then I'm going to transmit this to the slave device using the transmit function. But I'm only sending one byte this time. So I need to set the size to 1. And to receive data, I need to use SPI receive function. And this function almost takes similar parameters. The first parameter is the SPI handle type diff, then the RX buffer, so SPI RX buffer and then the size you want to read. I'm reading only one byte because this is one byte register. As you can see in here, in the data sheet, this is only a single byte register. Uh, and, and other SPI devices, registers might have two bytes or three or four bytes, but in this case, it's only one byte. So the size is one, and the timeout is 50. Finally, we need to bring the slave select line high again. So I hope this started to make sense. To transmit data, we bring the slave select low, transmit register followed by data, then bringing the slave select high. For receive, it's a similar thing, but when we transmit the register address, we set the most significant to high to enable read mode, and then followed by a receive function to read data. And finally, bring slave select high again. And this is true for almost all SPI devices. So let me compile the code, load it to the board, and get into debugging mode to verify that this is working. And on debugging mode, first thing to do is to add Rx buffer to the watch memory so that we can see the value in there. Now let's run the code. Perfect, so we get in 0x11. This is the value that we're written to register 20. And we are reading it successfully. Now let's do continuous reading of the x-axis acceleration raw data and display this in uh, STM Studio. I'm going to do this in the while loop. Uh, and this one is on register 29 according to the date sheet. And I'm going to put a small delay. So let's compile the code, load it to the board and go to STM Studio to read the values. And on STM Studio we need to navigate to the project folder click on this and go to the folder and where you store your project files in and in here go to mdk arm and go to spi1 and you will see dot axf file you need to select this and this will contain all the variables in your project and I want to read only a single variable which is the rx buffer import and close and you'll see this under here uh, right click, select this, right click and send to variable viewer number one. And I want to select the mode to table, run this and reset your STM board. And I can see this is changing as I lean my accelerometer right and left. This is just the raw data. Perfect. Now I've just shown you how to read measurement data and polling method. So I'm reading continuously every 300 milliseconds. This is not efficient because I'm continuously reading data from the device. Uh, however, I can make this more systematic by using interrupt. 
I can program the device for the output data rate to be uh, 3 Hz or 6 Hz and it will interrupt at this rate whenever a new data is ready. This part is not purely SPI communication but it's more of the kind of things you'll be doing when you're dealing with a measurement SPI device. So in this case I want to enable the interrupt and what I've got to do is I first need to enable interrupt from the slave device then do the interrupt handling routine on the STM board. And to do this I need to enable the data ready interrupt, interrupt line number one and I need to set the pol polarity to high. So I'm going to write to register number 23, control register number 3, uh, and the data is C8 to enable the interrupt. Uh, now I need to redefine the external interrupt callback in my main. You might already have seen this in my external interrupt tutorial. So go to GPIO, and there's a function called XTI callback. And I need to copy this to my main and without the weak object. And this one will be called whenever the data already interrupt uh, has got a rising, a rising edge. And I've got to copy the reading data code to that callback. So whenever this will be called, uh, this would read the data from uh, the x-axis acceleration register. Uh, I'm also going to blink an LED so that we can see this on the board. That's it. Let me compile the code, load it to the board, and we'll have a look first at the board and look at the blinking LED, and then we'll we'll look at the data in STM Studio. Okay, very good. Uh, and as I increase the output data rate to let's say 12 hertz, I expect the LED to blink even faster. So I'm going to change this, set this to three, uh, compile it, and load it to the board, and you should see the LED blinking faster. Let's have a look at the board and then to STM Studio to read the raw data. Okay, so you, you saw the LED blinking faster. Now let's have a look at the raw data again. So here are the raw data as I uh, tilt it right uh, back to middle. You see the raw data changing. Okay, so this is how to use SPI on the STM board with the help of Cubemix. And I've shown you how to transmit, receive data, and how to read measurement data in both polling method and an interrupt method. Okay, if the uh, Cubemix method is all you're looking for, you may stop the video here. And as always, if you found the video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, but I'm going to carry on, and I'm going to show you how to set this project up without Cubemix. This is particularly useful for students. I know many students who want to learn how to do this are not supposed to use a Cubemix. If you're one of those, you will find the second part very useful. And to do this without Cubemix, we have to do everything in Carl Microvision. So go to a project, click on New Microvision Project, I need to select a location to store the folders in. I'm going to store them here and give you a project a name. I'm going to call it SPI No Cube and click Save. Now we need to select the board STM3407 VGT and select the software components. First one we need to enable is the core software component, then go to Device and Startup, uh, expand STM Cube Framework and enable Classic. Classic require other software components, we can add them by clicking Resolve. And now expand Hull and I need to add the SPI one. And this requires a DMA, I need to add it. And that's everything, so click OK. OK, so as you can see, Carl Macrovision generated a few files, mainly the Hull drivers, but it didn't add a main, so I need to add it manually. Right click, add a new item to the group, and it's a main file. It's a C file, and I'll call it main. And on this main, we first need to include the Hull library header file, then define the main function with an infinite while loop at the end. Uh, and we need to do two things. We need to configure the pins, the SPI pins, LED pin, and the chip select and interrupt pin. I'm going to define them and I'm going to configure them in a separate function, which I'll call GPIO config. And the second thing we need to do is to set up the SPI parameters. And I'll do this in another function. I'm going to call SPI config. And for the body of the first function, I first need to enable the clocks. Enable SPI clock, GPIO port D that has got the LEDs on it, port A the SPI one, uh, port E the one that has got the interrupt and the chip select line. Then I need to enable a GPIO, I need to define a GPIO in a type diff. It's like a structure to configure the parameters. I'm going to call it my pin init. And first, I'm going to do the SPI ones, the SPI pins. 
So the pins are 5, 6, and 7 on port A. Uh, 5 is a clock, 6 is a mizu, and 7 is a mozi line. Uh, and then the mode to uh, alternate. Uh, and the speed to very high. Um, and the uh, pull to no pull. And the alternate function, uh, the alternate function is SPI1. And now I just need to call Halti Bio init to implement those configuration for port A and for pins 5, 6, and 7 for the SPI pins. Now I need to do a similar thing for the LED configuration. So very similar things. So the pins are 12, 13, 14, and 15. The mode is output push pull and the speed is low. And I call in this and it's on port D. And similarly for the chip select pin, uh, it's uh, pin 3 and it's on port E, but similar setting to LED, so that's why we didn't have those middle bits. And finally the interrupt pin, which is an external interrupt on rising gauge, and it's on port E, pin 0. I then need to enable the external interrupt and the cystic interrupt. This is going to be used by the SPI functions, and this is for the external interrupt line. Uh, and now I need to define the SPI, SPI config function. Uh, but first I'm going to define a SPI handle type div. It's going to be used inside the config function. But I need to define it global because it's going to be used in the main as well. So defining the SPI config function, I need to use my SPI handle to set the instance to SPI1. And then in it, initialize uh, firstly, the board rate or, or prescaler to uh, 216 to bring the uh, speed down to 1 megahertz or 1 megabits per second. Uh, and then uh, clock phase to edge 1, uh, which means that data will be uh, updated on the rising edge. Uh, and then general other settings like uh, polarity to low, uh, disable CRC calculation, CRC data size to 8 bit, direction 2 lines, send and receive first bit is the most significant bit, the mode to SPI master, and disable slave select so to software. Uh, TI mode to disable, and then I need to call in help SPI init function to implement those initialization, uh, bypassing the SPI handle type diff in here. And that's everything for SPI config function. Uh, and one last thing I need to add at the bottom is the IRQ handler. This is usually defined by Cubemix in a separate file called hull slash IT. But we don't have that folder, that's why we need to add it manually. So what this does is that it's going to link the device external interrupt handle to the hull handle, IRQ handle. And same thing for the cystic handle. You don't have to know much about this. I explained them in details in one of my videos. And now let's get back to the main. And I need to call in these functions in here. The first one is hull init function. And then my config functions. And now we are in a similar page to Cubemix setup. We are ready to add all the code we added in Cubemix in here now. I'm not going to do it line by line. I'm just going to copy it over. And this is it. And just to convince you that it works the same, let me compile it and load it to the board and see if it's going to work on the board and also on STM Studio. And to load it to the board successfully, you need to select the right debugger. So you need to go to options for target, uh, debug, and select STLink debugger. And also go to settings and enable trace. I set the clock to 16 megahertz and click OK. Now it should load fine to the board. Perfect. Now let's have a look at the LED on the board and then to Steam Studio. Uh, and on Steam Studio, just click run and now play around with your board, tilt it to the right, to the left, back, and you can see the values changing. Alright, and this brings me to the end of my tutorial today. I've shown you how to use SPI on the Steam board. Uh, thanks for watching, and if you found it helpful, as always, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.